Hopkinton High School hosted their annual science and engineering fair. Many were in attendance as students showed off their projects. What's your project here about? Um, it's about jewelry and nickel and allergies. <laughs> Um, we're both allergic to nickel and we want to find a solution to that problem. Yeah, we use nail polish, wax, toothpaste, and nickel guard to coat our nickel pieces with to see which one would work the best. The one that worked the best is nail polish, and nail polish is also the most affordable option as it completely covers all the nickel. Alright, and how long did this take you? About a month. The project was the effects of timing on student performances. I had two groups, and uh, group A, I said nothing about timing, and group B, I did tell them they were timed. Uh, group B, which was timing, did significantly worse, uh, interestingly enough, and group A, group A, which was untimed, did better. Alright, and uh, how long did this take you to do? Uh, well, both uh, classes both two different classes, their same grades, uh, were tested on the same day. So all data was received in about a day. So. I'd like to start by saying a few thank yous. First and foremost, we want to say a huge thank you to the students who participated this year. We had 29 projects with 49 students this year, which is one of our highest numbers in a long time. And all of these students, as the parents know, did this in addition to their regular coursework. So this was an extracurricular activity in class they took upon themselves to do this year. A lot of these students are doing sports and the play and lots of really difficult classes and found time to study something that was really important and special to them. Um, and they're great role models for the rest of our school in terms of being able to balance so many different things and pursue a passion. So I'd like to give a round of applause for all of our students. <laughs> today by recognizing two special students who have participated in the science fair for multiple years and are our two seniors for this year. So if we could have our two seniors come on up, Freya and Hamachu. You couldn't ask for two better role models for uh, great people, great role models for their younger siblings this year who partnered in their project, and just all around wonderful students and scientists. Um, when we think about what kind of kids we want to have involved in the science fair, these two definitely come to mind in terms of pursuing questions that are important and meaningful and inspiring those around them to fall in love with science too. It's no uh, surprise that there's 10, 20, 30 kids clustered at their posters at the end of the day because their uh, curiosity and enthusiasm for their project is really contagious. So they're going to be very, very big shoes to fill next year. We're so proud of them and it's been so much fun to be able to work with them the last few years. So we'd like to wish them well next year. Congratulations. This is Elle single-handedly started this program 30 years ago with two students. Stop saying 30. <laughs> one of those students is Jen Fairbanks, who's one of our math teachers at Hawkington High School. And another is John Franks, who's here and served as a judge this morning. So thank you, John. Um, and it started with just two students, and it's grown into something really special and really meaningful to the town of Hopkinton today. Everyone that's worked with Mrs. L knows that she's one of the most hardworking and dedicated teachers you'll ever come across in your career. I was lucky enough to have her as a teacher when I was in Hopkinton High School, and that's the biggest reason that I'm here today. And like doing 25 years ago. <laughs> doing something that I love. Connor also was lucky enough to have Mrs. L. And so many of the judges and people that came back today also had her. So you can see that the impact she has lasts long beyond when you graduate from Hopkinton High School. The way that she supports students, whether it's in the classroom or for a science fair project, is second to none in our building. She does an enormous amount of work outside of school hours to make students know that what their question is is important, what they're curious about is um, worth dedicating time to, and she has set an incredibly high bar for what it means to be a mentor and a science fair director. So we would like to honor her and say thank you for creating such a special program and also have her know how much it means to us long after we leave the, the doors of Hawkington High School that that kind of mentor and that kind of teacher has an impact for many, many years. So we want to say a big thanks to Mrs. L.
many, many years. Oh, yeah. And so we have these rooms with Al for her to look at. So a lot of them call her coach and remember fondly their, their times in the project room after school. So we know you'll enjoy reading about those. She remembers almost every project she's ever worked with. So hundreds of students at this point. So it's very, very special to be here. Well, thank you so much. And I, I could not have passed the torch to better people. I'm so proud um, to have them play a role in this. And, um, Today was fantastic. I know personally the hours and time it takes for you guys to support the students and give them these opportunities and to be part of this community for years. Um, and the support of the town has just been my blessing and I feel like I should be announcing my retirement. <laughs> <laughs> The top three projects took home a prize. Here is a look at the top three. We run into challenges and we have to persevere. We have to show that grit to get through it. And so in Val's honor and to say thank you for all the years of service, we've decided to come up, or we've come up with a new award for this year. And so this is the Valerie Lichtansky Award for Perseverance. And we're giving this every year to a project that may not have scored the highest, and it's not about how you did today during the fair, but it's about the perseverance and grit you showed throughout the process. And that's what makes someone a really good scientist, a really good student, and someone that we're excited about their potential. So we'd like to honor um, a team that has shown this throughout the years. There are multiple year science fair participants. They've shown that grit, that determination, and whenever they run into a challenge, just like Val, they have a great attitude and a great work ethic to try and get through that. So we're really proud to honor for the first time, and there'll be a plaque downstairs in the science hallway with their names, Sophie Marks and Amanda Hansen for the effects of plants grown hydroponically with insecticide. the intelligent cloud-based medication dispensing and scheduling system to help prevent and deter accidental overdosing. Our society faces a serious opioid epidemic. In 2016, 64,000 people died as a result of opioid overdoses. According to a major news organization, more people died in one year due to opioid overdoses than the amount of people that died in the 20-year period of the Vietnam War. And we went, when we read the statistic, we were shocked. So we decided to do more research into the underlying cause. What we found out is that the number one cause of accidental and unintentional death in the United States is due to opioid overdosing. And that surpasses the amount of people that die as a result of car accidents. In Massachusetts alone, over 11,000 people died solely from accidental and unintentional overdosing. Unfortunately, these problems are also prevalent amongst the elderly. A staggering 40 to 70% of all seniors stray from their daily medication cycle. Because of all these issues, the amount of deaths related to un unintentional op opioid overdosing has quadrupled since 1999. 
So in order to solve the problem of accidental opioid addiction, uh, Rohan and I created a hardware and software uh, system uh, which so aims to solve the uh, amount of people, uh, the problems for a lot of people who are uh, becoming addicted by accidentally taking more of their prescription medication. Nearly 80% of these people uh, who ended up dying because of opioid addiction uh, were initially prescribed uh, opioids by a physician. So Rohan and I re-engineered the hardware of a pill bottle, so now our pill bottle can now store uh, multiple different types of medication. And this pill bottle is connected through the cloud uh, to a mobile application uh, which has a patient portal and a caretaker portal. The caretaker portal uh, would be used by someone who's trusted, like a doctor taking care of a patient. Uh, and the patient portal allows the patient to manage the amounts of medication in uh, the bottle and allows them to dispense uh, medication uh, using logic uh, built into the software. Uh, once the uh, application is active, the patient can simply click a button and dispense a pill, uh, going through some very complex validation. And once this is done, the medication will dispense. The system also has uh, checks in place so that if medication is being dispensed too frequently, uh, it'll actually stop dispensing medication and will notify the caretaker uh, that uh, there might be some abuse going on. And the caretaker can actually step in and prevent further medication from being dispensed. Wow, excellent. How long did this take you? Uh, we've been working on this since September. Very good. All right, well, nice job, guys, and congratulations. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. The top 12 projects received a chance to advance to a regional tournament here is a look at the top 12. 